Hi guys, today is a product review day. This is not a sponsored product, I bought it myself, but I wanted to share with you the unboxing and to talk about the product. As you can watch, it says Benchtop Digital LCR Meter. So now, let's unbox this puppy. Many years ago, to get a device like that, was impossible. It was only for people with great budget and most of it we are talking about industries and companies. Nowadays these kind of devices are very accessible for any one of us. It comes with a little manual and the certification of warranty. But to tell you the truth this kind of manuals is not enough for this device. Standard power cable. Two extra fuses and Kelvin cables with alligators. In my opinion, not the best approach, and later in another video, we will understand why. It comes in a metal case, doesn't feel like a toy. Its size is standard for most, let's say, 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters spans, if you want to put it in a stand. We are talking about one feet and this average with most multimeter size we can find in the market now. The fabricant says the panel is easy to use and is very friendly, but to understand that we need to know how to use an LCR bench meter. This is not the standard capacitor meter. It's a device with four leads, Kelvin type, and we give multi-parameters in its measurements. Like any Chinese product, there is something always that we have to understand and assimilate. As example, we have the buttons here, power, level, frequency, range, and speed. So now let's turn it on and let's accept the challenge. Beauty. I like the large screen and the big numbers. And the second parameter measurement, the main important one, is also a large number. But also we have a view of everything else to work with on the same screen. Okay, I need to make a pause here because I don't know which cable is it? It doesn't have any sign for it. So I will have to classify the cables and in another video, as I told you, we will talk about these cables. All right. To understand the connections, we have high current, low current, height potential, and low potential. That means those ones are delivering the current, I mean delivering from here, returning to there, and those ones are like a kind, let's say, the multimeter. They are doing the reading of the signal. So in that way, the voltage drop across of these leads in the loop of the circuit will not be included in the measurement of the whatever we are reading capacitance inductance resistance so that's the reason we use the kelvin wire system for wires i will explain more and um, in another video and we will take the video just for that this pnc connector has a yellow color inside, what is great because that means we have better connection on it.
Now I'm going to connect it. Let's go with the buttons. First one is level. Level means the voltage level. One volt, 1.5, two volts, 100 millivolts, 300 millivolts, 600 millivolts, one volt. Most of the tests in this kind of devices and in some data sheets will be in one volt RMS. The device always starts in auto and it will select for inductor L, C for capacitor and R for resistor. The second button is frequency. This model supposedly is the 10 kilohertz model, but for one mistake from the factory and I am the lucky one they didn't lock by firmware the device and I got the 100 kilohertz device even when the firmware says it's the one for 10 kilohertz. In the specifications it says points, but points is the steps. So for 10 kilohertz it will go for 10 points, 100 hertz, 120, 200, 400, 800, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, and 10 kilohertz. For the 20 kilohertz, it says 12 points. So after 10 kilohertz, we go to 15 and 20. And 16 points for the 100 kilohertz. That means after 15, we go to 20 kilohertz, 40, 50, 80, and 100. In set, I will see the firmware version. So is the 10 kilohertz model, right? Mine will go to the 100 kilohertz. So I was lucky that they make a mistake. For the industry, I always recommend to companies buy devices like this for the 200 kilohertz. And the price goes even for thousands of dollars to the one megahertz, two megahertz or more. But that's because they have to make some specific tests on those levels. For engineering, for designing, small workshop like mine, or maybe for repairing, most of the time we use one kilohertz and the 10 kilohertz unit will be good enough. If we come out from auto, we can select the range or just punching the range will keep us out of the auto. Auto is good because it will select between the capacitor, the inductor, the resistor and the impedance. Look, that range is locked and auto. The next one is the speed. The speed will be two times per second, five times per second or 10 times per second. The reading is refreshing. Now we have the cursor path. With the horizontal arrows, we select the function. With the vertical ones, we change the value. The one that I changed now is the output resistor. Most of the time, the system is made for the 100 ohms. We can go lower to 30, but I recommend you using average 
the 100 ohms. Okay, we already spoke about auto. With the next one, we will change the value, the second value of the reading. So it will tell if it is the reactance, if it is the loss in the degrees of the readings, if it is the Q value, the charge, or if it is the phase shift angle, or if it is the internal equivalent resistor. A bridge meter is not like the capacitor meter. This device makes a kind of bridge and what it does is it changes the value of the other impedance to match the one we are doing the measurement. So in that case, the bridge has the capability to work either in serial or parallel and the system has the button of auto to try to detect it. As for serial, P for parallel. Then we have the maximum and minimum and we can hold and record the value that we are interested for. The device can do average too. We can save the data in a table. Also, we can hold and freeze the measurement on the screen. Two more buttons and we understood the whole keyboard. This is an electrolytic capacitor and what it does is it will change the value because remember this is voltage RMS AC so we'll create an off offset we call it here bias but it's an offset and we'll put the voltage on the upper side of the Cartesian uh, trace on the positive voltage so this is for electrolytic capacitors that are DC and when we do that also the second value will be the internal equivalent resistor And the last one, as we said, this one was the electrolytic, electrolytic capacitor. The last one is just for resistors, to test a resistor with the Kelvin wires. Is this button. Now, let's play with it. I did a quick calculation online for 99.9 .9 ohms and an average of capacitance of 9.83 in 1 kilohertz. It says it's 16.19 ohms the impedance and the phase shift angle is minus 89.6. That's the resistance. This is our capacitor and this is a serial circuit with a lot of noise and parasitic capacitance from the breadboard. That's the impedance and the phase shift angle. not too far away from the calculations. No doubt that is a great device, a wonderful piece of equipment to have in the electronics laboratory. More than to test the capacitor, we analyze part of the network. 
We analyze the capacitors and the components around. The system is automatic, can detect if it is serial, if it is parallel, and which kind of components have to get an average impedance. Sometimes we have a very complex circuit with many capacitors and inductors, all of them together, and it will take us the whole afternoon, three whiteboards, trying to make the calculations. If we do it right, we can get an average very close to it, but this device can make it in just a fraction of a second. Guys, I recommend this equipment. The model for 10 kHz is good enough for small laboratories. Industries, they need more because the idea is to test the device in the frequency you are using or to test the device in the frequency the data sheet says was made for. For the rest of it, if you are lucky like me and they make a mistake and you can get the 100 kilohertz in the price of 10 kilohertz, good luck guys. I have another device like this, it's 10 kilohertz and you will see it in another videos probably, but this one was a real good mistake from their side. Thanks guys by watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time and remember we have to talk about the Kelvin wire system, how to improve it and uh, we will improve this by sure and you will understand my criticisms about. But the device I think deserves a like and the price guys makes accessible to us everything that in my generation was almost impossible for a person like me, the average person growing in the electronics uh, market and world to get one of those. So see you next time with more interested videos about electronics and I hope this video was good enough to help you to understand the keyword and what we are doing with it.